Hey guys, Pathogaming right here, right now. And today, I'm bringing you my three key principles to hitting Challenger in as few games as possible. It took me 67 games to hit Challenger from Iron 2. And the three key principles are, you gotta slam items. You gotta slam, slam, slam. You gotta concentrate on strong compositions, but at the same time, you gotta be flexible and play the composition you are given tied to the items you have. And you gotta scout and position. That's like a very important thing because a lot of people don't scout and don't position and then their army gets shit on for no reason. So let's dive into it and go into more detail. So building items, that means Whatever items you have on 2 1, if you have three components, you want to make an item. And this ties to starting with a good starting item. So, for example, I like to start bow because thanks to bow, I can make static shiv, I can make runs hurricane, possibly RFC or last whisper, and uh, even a titans if I have a good tank. And I can put most of these items on uh, Ezreal or Twitch or uh, Tristana or Trundle. So I know my best starting item that I want to slam, and I know the units I want to put them on. So it's really good to make the items early and start wind streaking and start preserving HP. And if you think about it, an item that you slam on stage two gets value throughout the whole game. So if the game ends, let's say, there is no stage six, so it's just stage two to end of stage five. If you slam on stage two, you get two, three, four, and five. That's four stages of uh, having utility of the item. Well, if you wait for like best in slot item for stage four, basically you're only using the item or like the full item for half of the game. And you might not even hit your perfect, your perfect item holder. Like if you just want to play... Uh, Jin, so that's why you're not making uh, a sub like a, a different item like Runans because you know that Jin doesn't usually like Runans as much. And uh, you could have slammed Runans on 2 1 for Ezreal. And you're like, no, 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 but I'm gonna play Jin later. And then you don't even find the Jin, and it's like you find the Jin on stage late stage four. It just it doesn't get enough value. So you gotta slam that shit. And another thing that I want to point out is if you get like these shitty components or like shitty items like two tiers two rods you just slam a blue buff slam a death cap and you put it on somebody anybody like a utility unit but like blue buff death cap that's not bad on ori or seraphine possibly victor if you find them like you gotta find you gotta make use and find champions to use the items that you have it's not like i'm gonna wait for these perfect items to put on these champions i want to find on stage four on level seven or level eight it's, it doesn't make sense like you just gotta slam the items you have and then just figure out your comp later and that's like what the second point ties into compositions there's so many tiers out there on like the best compositions like s tier a tier b tier all that shit that's great that's great you should know the compositions learn the compositions know what is like in the meta right now what is strong, what is not so strong, and what you should what you should avoid. But it's important to concentrate on a strong early board, a strong mid board, and really just play the board you have with the best items you can make. So just like, as I mentioned, if I have a blue buff death cap, and I'm playing innovator, well that, that just goes on Heimer. And maybe I, I made a I may, maybe made a last whisper or runans on Ezreal because I thought I would be going for AD. And then I got a fuck ton of AP items. Well, then I'm going to just kind of play a comp that has some AD and some AP item carriers. And hopefully I'll get some tank items as well. But it's like, you want to play the items and unit combinations you get. Not force anything that isn't there. And you especially don't want to force compositions that are S tier. Just because they're S tier and just because you have like... An item, like one item for the composition. And you don't want to make any other items throughout the whole game until you get your uh, four cost carry. And you want to make sure he has the, items, the right items. Like why? Just build items 
for the units you have at, at the time you have them and just preserve HP. Like the best way to get a challenger or like get to the high rank is the highest rank you, you can, like a higher rank, whatever rank you want to achieve, is to build items that have a strong early game and mid game. Because especially lower down, like in diamond and platinum, what I experienced was like people were holding way too many components and they were just piss weak because of that. So like in those lobbies, especially if you're like in this lower elo hell, just build items and you will be stronger than those guys and you'll have more HP. And then maybe if they hit their perfect composition, they'll beat you. Maybe like, maybe you hit like a legendary and you win or like some of them won't hit what they're looking for and they'll die out. And usually the way it works is like most of my games, the worst I, I got like one eighth on during the climb, but like I think usually it got like fifth, six and obviously better than that. But it's like I get a fifth or six because I have so much HP and then towards towards the end of the game, like maybe somebody hits a three star or got, maybe there's like unlucky matchmaking, but I'm already guaranteed a fifth or six because of the HP I preserve. And another thing to tie in with compositions and, and item holders is two star one cost and two cost with decent items are almost always better than like a random four cost. You can just like play it with the comp. Like two star Tristana with, with good items it's just good to add a Jin into the comp rather than sell the Tristana and play like a one star MF because then you get a lot weaker. So it's just like try to keep your two star item holders until you have your two star carry. And the third point, which is also very important, is scouting and positioning. You got to be able to scout and position and you, you got to know what you're looking for. So basically, uh, it's Assassins and it's Blitz. Those are like the biggest... Uh, threats in most lobbies even in early game mid game late game so like what does blitz do blitz blitz is a unit or like pulls a unit in the corner so have a fucking corner bait assassins jump to the back and kill your back line so if you're playing bodyguards or like if you have multiple tanks have like the main tank in the front row and the other tank in the back row to protect your units it's not that difficult if you think about it and like you don't even have to like scout in position all the time as long as you put some forethought into like, okay, so what can screw me over? Okay, if I have like these two units in the front, these two units in the back, and like my carries somewhere hidden in the nooks, like somewhere in like the the special hexes that are kind of like off in the corner in the front row or like in the third row or the second row, third row, like you got to make sure that like whatever happens, whatever composition you're playing against, it doesn't just completely decimate you. And then towards the end of the game, you really got to look at what other people are playing and how you can maximize the damage from your carry while mitigating the damage from their carry. So like, yes, I presume I presume some of you know League of Legends. I, I play Dota. Like it's it's almost the same thing in this regard. Like you want to have the tank soaking up as much damage as possible. You want to have the carry doing as much damage as possible and picking off key targets during the fight. And then you want to have like the utility guys making sure that the tank stays alive and that the carry stays alive. So that, that's like the same principle in TFT. You got to have your tank in the right in the right hex to make sure that he gets targeted the most and takes as much damage as possible. And then you got to have your carry hidden away so that it survives as long as possible. And then you have your utility units kind of keeping the tank alive, keeping the carry alive, uh, doing lots of CC and lots of annoying shit. And making sure that you win the round. And then you have like your items like like Shroud and Zephyr and all that good shit. And you got to make, make sure you use that. And if you follow these principles of slamming items, having a strong board, playing strong compositions, but based on the items you have and the units you're giving throughout the game and scouting and positioning correctly, you are going to dominate your lobbies, especially if you're like sub master because you just outpace everyone else. So use these, use these key principles to your advantage and let me know about your climb. If you need me, I'm here for coaching. Take care, guys. Path of Gaming, out.